What is up, everyone? My name is Mr. J, and today I am very excited to bring you my Melfi Tri Brigade deck profile. If you know me at all, I am such a fan of fun decks that are still competitive. I will explain my card choices as I go along. Feel free to test this deck out. Just like my last deck profile, I promise this is one of the most fun decks you can play. All right, we're gonna start off with the Beast Engine. So, we have three copies of Rescue Cat. The best play starter turn one, you can use Rescue Cat to special summon both a Melfi Puppy and a Kalentosa from deck, and then overlay those two for a joyous Melfi. That will give you plenty of interruptions on your opponent's turn. And of course, I had to get the Dusa printing. Very beautiful Rescue Cat. Next up, we have three Nimble Beaver. Nimble Beaver is the best follow-up play because if you have a high attack monster on the board, you can use Beaver to overlay into Ronin Raccoon and make a beefy token. But moving on, for our Melfi monsters, we have two copies of Melfi Puppy and two copies of Melfi Caddy. Puppy can serve as an interruption, returning itself to the hand to special summon Kalantosa from the deck. And Caddy is amazing because it can search you Tri Brigade Karaz or Alpha the Master of Beasts. That is crazy. Both of these are great cards. I found this to be the most optimal ratio 2 and 2 just because you need room to fit in tailored hand traps to disrupt your opponent's strategies. I like Puppy because Puppy's effect can special summon the Caddy from deck and then Caddy can get you the additional search. Next we are running to Alpha the Master of Beasts. This really is up to personal preference. This is not a cheap card, but it is so worth the investment. One of the most badass cards printed by Konami, Alpha's effect is a non-targeting bounce. So you can bounce any beast, beast warrior, or winged beast monster from your side of the field and bounce that many monsters on your opponent's side of the field. So this is basically a great way to run over a Herald of Ultimateness and a great out to Red-Eyes Dark Dragoon. For the purposes of the video, whenever I say beast, beast warrior, or winged beast, I'm just going to say Tri Archetype because you guys should all know what that means since we are playing Tri Brigades. Speaking of, moving on to our Tri Brigade engine. We run three Fractal. So definitely the best play starter on the Tri Brigade side. You can use his first effect to dump him and a Nerval from the deck to the graveyard. Then Nerval's effect will then either search you another copy of Fractal or a Karaz as another extender. Then we have two copies of Karaz. Karaz is a great extender because you can special summon him onto the field by discarding another Tri Archetype monster. So he serves as a great follow up after you bait out a disruption. And last but not least, we have two copies of Tri Brigade Nerval. Nerval is great for sending off a of Fractal and getting you an additional resource. He's basically there to load up your graveyard while not losing any card advantage. Obviously Fractal, Karaz, and Nerval all have the same effect that allows them to banish any Tri Archetype monsters from the graveyard to special summon a Link monster with the same Link rating as the numbers banished. So banishing four monsters from the graveyard will allow you to summon Shurig, for example, the Ominous Omen. I really like the Tri Brigade in this deck because it offers much needed firepower. And then moving on to the last beast in our deck, we have two Kalantosa and one Key Mouse. All right, so this was a tough decision for me. You could make the argument that only one Kalantosa is necessary, but summoning two Kalantosa off a Joyous Melfi to pop two of your opponent's cards, it's just too good. I would maybe cut it down to one, but I would never put it at three because you don't want to draw this card. And one copy of Key Mouse. This is for our Notoria Beast play off of Obedience Gold. So locking your opponent out of using spells is still really good. If you want to go a different route, then you could take the Key Mouse out. But I find it useful more often than not. All right, so I'm going to move on to the hand traps. We have two copies of Ash. I know that's really weird, but you can add the third and just remove one of the other hand traps I'm about to show. Ash is still good. Try to make it so your opponent cannot access Ben 10 if you're playing against Drytron. That's all I have to say, for sure. 
Then we move on to three Nibiru's. This is a tough one to keep in because good players will always play around Nibiru, but more often than not, you will catch your opponent slipping. And Nibiru can absolutely blow out your opponent and win you the game. So personal preference, you can choose, again, whatever hand trap you want. Then we're moving on to three copies of DD Crow. So while playtesting online, I found DD Crow a freaking amazing. Most duelists today rely on the graveyard. Golden Lord, banish it. Drytron, Ben 10, or Medianis Drytron in the grave, just banish them. Virtual World, Chinglong in the grave, yeah, banish it. Amazing card, I love it at three, and it synergizes well with the Tri Brigade engine, which is a definite plus. And our last hand trap I'm gonna include it here is three copies of Infinite Impermanence. You know, this format, there's been a lot of talk about Imperm being really bad. I still like this card because it plays around Triple Tactics Talents and can turn off a Drytron player's Vanity's Ruler, which is extremely annoying, I might add. Against Rogue, of course, you can't go wrong with Impermanence too. And that's all for the monsters and hand traps. Moving on to the spells. All right, starting off, we have three copies of Fire Formation Tenki. Yes, the secret from the speed duels. Looks really nice. Tenki searches you, your Tri Brigade Fractal, and gets that engine up and running. Ideally, you can always use the Tenki as an Ash Blossom bait, but it's really up to you and your opening hand and deciding which play you really want to go with at that moment. So say for instance, you open up Tenki and the Rescue Cat. If you really need the cat to go through, then you might want to bait out your opponent with a Tenki, especially game one, because they might think you're playing Zodiac. Next up, all right, here it is, the two copies of Obedience Schooled. This one was also a tough choice for me. I was very torn on whether to max out on this card or remove it completely. Going second, I don't think this will help you against the meta decks this format. Going first, however, you can use this card to stun your opponent by going into Naturia Beast, or you can simply set up Joyous Melfi with a Puppy, a Caddy, and a Kalantosa under it, which is really nice. So very powerful card, I just don't like drawing multiple copies of it, especially going second. And we all know most decks this format want to go first. And then finally to round up the spells and to finish off the deck, we have three Egyptian God cards. Yeah, to me, these are the God cards. This rounds up the 41 card deck. You have one Raigeki, one Feather Duster, and one Called by the Grave. Truly, the modern day god cards, these can blow out your opponent, and I find it so surprising more people aren't at least main decking one of them in their decks. Feather Duster is amazing against Dogmatica Invoked, and Called By is always great offensively or defensively. Never do I regret drawing these cards unless, you know, Harpy's Feather Duster versus Drytron, of course, that's, yeah, brick. But that's it for the deck, let's move on to the extra deck. All right, moving on to the extra deck. You already know, the one Aturia Beast to stun your opponent and prevent them from using spell cards when you go first, amazing. Again, you can make this off one card, the Obedience School spell card. Next up, the best Melfi exceeds in my opinion. Joyous Melfi can lead to multiple disruptions on your opponent's turn. He can return himself back to the deck as a quick effect and special summon out the number of materials it had attached. Usually, it's just two materials, so you can special summon a Kalantosa or two and pop your opponent's cards, or bring back Melfi Puppy or Caddy to generate you more advantage. Then we have one copy of number 64, Ronin Raccoon Sandayu. I'm so glad I picked this guy up. Once you have a beefy monster in the field, Raccoon can summon a token with that beefy attack to push for game. Great card. Usually, my go-to card when I already have Shurig on the field and I'm trying to go for game. Then finally for Xyz, I am running one Divine Arsenal AA Zeus Sky Thunder. This is definitely a flex spot. You can attack with Joyous Melfi or with Ronin Raccoon and then overlay main phase 2 to bring out Zeus. But to be honest, this is very unnecessary. I've only summoned it once and it was at a point where I was already losing that game. 
but I guess that's why Zodiacs love it. It's such a blowout card and can change the game in your favor immediately. Moving on to our links, we have two copies of Tri Brigade Shurig, the Ominous Omen. Arguably more badass than Alpha the Master of Beasts, on summon, Shurig will banish one card on the field, non targeting, by the way, beautiful. And you can repeat this banish effect every turn, even on your opponent's turn, when a tri archetype monster is summoned to your side of the field. One of my favorite cards in all of Yu Gi Oh! hands down even though it was just released a few months ago the artwork is just beautiful great effect can't say anything more about it yeah amazing card then moving on we have two copies of tri brigade Farragut, the baron blossom this card is a great extender if for some reason you have a kalantosa in your hand you can use Farragut's effect special summon kalantosa from hand and then kalantosa will pop an opponent's card then link away Farajit with any of the monsters you control into a Rugal or into a Shurig. And that's not all because Farajit's second effect, when she's sent to the graveyard, you can draw one and then place one card from your hand on the bottom of the deck. So it's great for cycling into your side deck cards. Next, I do play one copy of Rugal, the Silver Sheller. So Tri Brigade Rugal. I like him because if you have him and Shurig on the field, then Rugal can special summon a Tri-Archetype monster from your graveyard or your hand to trigger Shurig's banishing effect. I like bringing back Nerval or Rescue Cat because they will return to your hand at the end phase, allowing you to recycle resources. I wish his grave effect was better though, and I definitely think this card could have been made better. Next up, we have one firefighting, the Ruma doll. Great to go into if you have a tanky on the field and if you want to get rid of a problematic back row your opponent might have. We have the one Mrs. Radiant. So this is actually supposed to be a Melfi of the Forest. That's the one card I'm missing unfortunately. Melfi of the Forest is the Xyz that searches you a Melfi card from the deck to the hand and will also negate an opponent's monster in the field when a Melfi effect is triggered. Then I am running one Salomon Great Almirage. This can just offer you extra protection from destruction effects and it's something i go to when my nimble beaver gets negated or god forbid i open up a nerval and normal summon it just link it off into an almirage and the nerval will get me a tri brigade monster then we have one copy of ancient warriors oath double dragon lords i really like this card you can summon it off any tri brigade monsters banishing effect because it bypasses the need for that ancient warrior monster restriction and he is basically the beast warrior version of heavenly spheres so he can disrupt your opponent by returning one face up card your opponent controls to the hand then for our last two extra deck monsters i am playing two copies of elder entity entis this is just to make the dogmatic invoke match a little bit easier these pretty much are open spots so if you decide to make this deck you can experiment with other options I really like the Mannequin Cat Ixyz that came out recently because it's a perfect extender so I will be putting that one in once I get it. But that's all for the extra deck. You might notice that there are some monsters missing from the main deck like Fable Cerebral or Valerie Fawn. But in my honest opinion those are just not good cards in this deck. Again I wanted to make this Melfi Tri Brigade deck as competitive as possible and fable cerebral some people just run it because if you discard it it special summons itself back to the field i don't know why anyone would run that imagine opening up two in your opening hand going second and then no way to discard it no way i would run that card but you know to each his own and then valerie fawn is such a bad card if it gets negated and then it's a minus one if you get negated so i try to make this deck as competitive as possible and that's all guys for the Melfi Tri Brigade deck. Let me know in the comment section what you liked about this deck and again, what would you change if you were the pilot. Hope you enjoyed this Melfi Tri Brigade deck profile. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time.